Hey folks, we're here to quit. Welcome to the All the Landscape YouTube channel. This is the mini skid review video. This was very popular from last year, got like 40,000 views in our last video. So we're gonna do another one here from Equip. So every mini skid here we come across, here we go. This is gonna be the takedown of them all. Here we go. All right, however Hunter edits this out, I don't know, but our first, uh, first runner up here, or first up is this Viper machine. Never heard of them. Um, okay, so counterweight concept that's interesting keeps the profile down i like that um right out the gate i don't love this pinch point here uh but you're well protected otherwise um low step like that right out the gate too uh that's cool hmm. tie down points that's interesting uh i wonder if that blows in or out there don't mind that i would want okay both of these are hydraulic so that's cool sometimes you'll see hydro and diesel one and you can see it get confused pretty easy but those are both diesels, so dual tanks. I don't love that I gotta fill two different tanks, but um, you know, whatever it is, what it is. Uh, getting up on the control thing. Um, no, we, we're running pilot controls here. Good Lord. Um, big reversible plate over there. I like that emergency stop. I'm, I like that. That's an interesting concept. I like that emergency kind of punch stop button there. Uh, foam con covered handle, that'll be worn out in no time. I don't. I like it, it's comfortable, but that thing that thing will be history pretty quick. Um, looking out here, we got our hydraulics, our controls, again, dual dual pilots here. You know, we're used on that ditch switch to our, our dual dual fingers, so that's, uh, oh, that's really soft, that's nice. I like that, that's cool. That's a really soft control. Maybe it'll be too touchy, maybe not, I don't know. Um, but, uh, and then what do we got here? I don't know what that is, so we'll have to research into that more. But otherwise, standard controls here. Interesting. Um, hmm, that's interesting. Okay, that's your your throttle, I guess. So other than that, I don't love that there. I feel like I'm gonna body check myself on that constantly, uh, but maybe not. Tracks and undercarriage look uh, standard and okay. Colors pretty wild. My son Zeke would absolutely love that. Uh, oh, I thought that was a solid piece of metal. I'm like, what is going on here? Okay. Uh, but other than that, what do we got in here? A Yanmar, so that's a good good engine so far as I know. Um, in interesting that that's all insulated like that. Uh, that's probably not the worst idea, really. Uh, easy access to, to air filter, I like that. Uh, battery, that's not terrible access if you gotta jump it. There might be a positive takeoff on it, don't know. Standard hitch plate, you could also put a uh, TV on there, so that's cool. Who wouldn't love that? And uh, Whatever, overall styling and everything's a little choppy, but um, they were saying this thing retails at 30K, which that seems to be a great value price point. I do like that a lot. Great, great machine, it seems like, for that value. So there we go. One other comment is uh, our grease irks here. I, a lot of people love having grease irks. I prefer non-greasable things. Uh, again, so we're not badgering the guys to be constantly uh, changing the freaking or uh, greasing things and all that kind of stuff uh, just we, we, we would like to get away from that um, but there you go but I mean if you can get I mean look at that you can have a machine that takes you to a whole new level at that price point that's pretty cool it's not vertical lift it's not vertical lift but it's self leveling is that what I was understanding yeah, here so your bucket will stay the same so but if, you, yeah. if you were running forks you'd have to do the dance yeah the right level, it'll just stay level that's cool stuff, okay so. Awesome. Okay, cool. Thank you guys. All right, folks, we're over at Giant here, and uh, we got this this thing. A lot going on here in a little package. Uh, tracks immediately. I gotta have tracks. I don't want that. Whatever. That's just me. Uh, super simple on the back end here. I like that visibility of your uh, fuel. That's cool. Um, controls look crazy complicated. I don't love that. Um, I do like it. That's pretty reachable though. That's pretty cool. I like all that. That's cool. Um, yeah, that's okay. That's interesting. Uh, just a, a real basic machine here. It beat the tar out of not having one. I can, I can tell you that. So I'm going to definitely be more in the track in the things here. Standard coupler. Of course, that's a must. Hydraulics. I like to having a light. That's wonderful. The styling is just a lot going on here. I don't love that. I don't understand what this is actually. Um, but um, I feel like that's going to get bent and destroyed just somehow. Um, yeah, interesting machine. Here we're at Bobcat. Uh, 
I want to get a two ton. Okay, the Bobcat MT. What do we got here? One hundred. And um, so did a video on this last year, but uh, of course, good looking machine, Bobcat. I don't love the styling as much as I love Ditch Witch, which that doesn't matter, but I keep saying it, so it must matter to me to some extent. Um, I like that the uh, operators, you know, protected here uh, within that. This step here is pretty daggone tall. I don't love that. Control center is a little clunky, but it doesn't really matter. Love having lights. That's absolutely wonderful. Uh, simple controls, I think. Um, yeah, I think so my hands are big, so I can reach up here and, and guide this thing pretty well. If you're trying to hold this and drive it, it's going to be a shaky mess. So if you can kind of do this and do your steering and stuff, I really prefer that ditch witch tw twin lever thing, or this thing needs to be really smooth. This is um, not, this is, um, well, all linkage, so it's not electronic and really smooth, so you gotta kinda work to steer that thing. Um, but uh, parking brake there, which I don't like that, it's kinda clunky and in the way, and you gotta actually really work to set that thing. I like that it's manual or uh, linkage based, I like that. Like cup holder, really like phone holder, that's a great idea. Um, I like just switches, that is great. Um, our ditch witch, I do not like the switches on our ditch witch, but um, otherwise, gauges are clear, really like that. Keys, eh, it's not in the most convenient of spots right there, whatever. But when you're on an office thing a million times a day, that little stuff, in my opinion, matters. Um, there's got to be grease, or, yeah, grease irks, so you know, I'm not a fan of grease irks, whatever. But other than that, that broom would be handy, holy crap, it'd be sweet. Okay, our beloved ditch witch here. Um, love the fuel gauge, real, uh, real handy. Although I feel like that should be more oriented towards the operator, but whatever. Uh, I like the, you know, I prefer the controls of these things uh, over most everybody. I like that dual stick. It's just so much easier to feather around. Uh, I really like that. Um, I hate that switch. I really dislike that, you know. But uh, other than that. All your gauges, all that stuff's in good shape. Glow plug thing's a little out of the way, but theoretically you don't need it that much anyhow. Cup holder's practically useless. It won't hold anything really when you're slamming around. Uh, but great visibility, great styling. Platform's a little high, uh, but um, i trying to think what else. The other end of that too is this. This needs a lock on it, the hydraulic fluid, so somebody doesn't actually put diesel in there. So that needs to be more more concealed in my opinion. That is the SK800 great size machine. We have a 1550 and a 750 in our shop. So uh, you know that. So this is 1750. I don't want them to get any bigger. They need to stop at the 1550 because that's the ideal size machine. No, Brittany, going we're to. going to perish because of you. She didn't put water in her backpack. All right, Hardscape Mastery, come check that event out in the winter. Okay, so the 1750, they say it's a longer track base, but it is, that's, that's insanely long. Uh, things I wouldn't like about that is when you're steering on turf and stuff like that, it's just more turf you're tearing up. So I don't love that. No, it does make it more stable, makes it uh, able to uh, uh, pick up more, obviously more flotation, so you're rutting less. That part's really great, I do like that. Um, platform's a little high, I don't love that. Again, I hate this, I hate that switch. That switch isn't bad, but it just feels flimsy. Um, good controls. This, uh, they've made this smaller, so it's a little, I think I like that, I think I like that. Britt, tell me what you think of that controller. Um, but uh, other than that, you, uh, we, we love the 1550, great styling. Uh, we love that machine, we'll keep that going forever. Then you got this kind of mini skid steer thing here. I think they call that a Zon, yeah. And uh, it's got a lot of versatility, a lot of, to take all the mini skid attachments, so that part's pretty cool. Um, and then over mulch mate, they got a big reveal of a bounce house. It's just actually a huge bounce house slide. I hate to ruin it for everyone. I actually don't, I don't know. All right, Britt, we good? Here we are at uh, Kanga. Uh, this thing's wild, holy smoke. You talk about bare minimum, man, alive. That's that's just a dedicated trenching machine, I think. Uh, okay, cool. So, uh, very simple. Man, a little Kubota engine in there. How could you go wrong with that, though? Um, OTT, over the tire tracks. Um, so, that's cool. Big, simple to read gasket, fuel gauge, I like that. Um, 
Uh, I've never loved paddle controls, so your hands have got to be, uh, I don't know, whatever. Oops, sorry, I wasn't even filming it. Um, your hands got to be big. This is, this, this stuff's kind of, I don't know, those, those controls are a little complicated. Um, but yeah, okay, interesting rig. And we got another one. This is, a, again, a Kubota engine in there. That's great. This thing's pretty big. Uh, wild uh, auger there. Um, interesting machine. Not really a lot to say about it. You got this kind of wild setup here. Um, kind of just like a power, micro power shovel kind of deal. Okay, we got Dixie Chopper. Uh, kind of a funky looking thing, battleship looking deal here. Uh, those will be busted off. Don't like that. I don't know what's going on here, but don't love that. Man, that, that thing's heavy as hell. Interesting concept. I guess that's the counterweight. I don't know that, dude. That's awful bouncy. Um, those controls are smooth. I like that. I don't know what that is. Um, but it's all all smooth controls. Um, throttle over there, kind of easy to slam. Gauges up here, I like that. That's uh, the oil pressure and stuff. That's cool. Um, pretty simple machine that's way too bouncy but part of it is the counterweight um easy access to the battery grease points though unfortunately you know we don't like that but those are pretty out in the open i like that um interesting machine the boat engine in there how you can go wrong Brittany on this super simple dixie chopper looks like i built it in the garage the seat the is more comfortable than your truck seat i know that's a bummer isn't it man the seat's so comfortable. yeah really that is a wacky looking machine but it's simple mine is not being able to touch yeah, you can't touch the deck. Well, that's a pressure thing. So you would turn it. Oh, I don't know about that shot for uh, YouTube. That'll get the views. The uh, but we would turn it down for you, or turn you up to about three three twenty. You know, when you're clocking. So that might bring you down a little bit. A hundred pounds. Flattering. There you go. Can you touch the ground now? Get your phone book under there. Okay, that's interesting. And just an honorable mention real quick, steel wrist here on this two ton. Isn't that thing a weapon? Isn't that a thing of beauty? Oh, I love it. Uh, very cool. Okay, so we got the case mini skidster here. Uh, really some cool styling. Pretty freaking slick here. Um, I love that, being able to see that right out the gate. Grease zerks, you know I don't love that. Uh, this thing is sharp, man. This is pretty cool. Again, a little bit of a high step up onto the plate there. Um, diesel fuel, easy access. I don't know where our fuel gauge is, so that's kind of whatever. Great visibility, that's cool. Um, those controls are interesting. Cup holder deep enough to actually hold something. That's cool. Um, but uh, what is that? Uh, electric over hydraulic, I think, controls. So they're super smooth. That's, that's really cool. Man, this machine is sleek. This thing's actually pretty sweet. Um, I don't know what we got going on there. Is that our throttle? Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, so that's kind of an easy easy punch through there. Switches, I like the switches a ton. Uh, control center there, or diagnostics there. That's really pretty slick. This thing looks, this thing is pretty sweet. Um, what's that? The, uh, oh, narrow tracks. Yeah, narrow tracks, that's a deal breaker. You want wide tracks. That's... Yeah, I was say, it might be an optional thing, but those tracks are too narrow. You want to get wide tracks on um, on uh, on your mini skids. You want that flotation. Uh, but it's a sleek machine. It's really a good looking rig. It's a 100, so a thousand pound rated machine, roughly. I'm guessing. And uh, so they got to get a 1500 version of this. You're good. Sorry. And uh, and then they'll have something to compete with Ditchwich. But again, 1550 all all the time, all day. So. Uh, yeah, that is a slick looking machine though. I like it. Uh, backup light, really like that. That's cool. Uh, yeah, slick, slick rig. I like it. Um, okay, here we are at Chora vertical lift model here. Grapple, super handy attachment. Um, styling, it's they're, it's they're sleeking it up a bit. There's still a lot going on with this thing. Um, that style of tracks is probably one we're going to move more towards. Uh, just to be easier on turf and uh, and stuff like that. So um, whatever. But uh, hydraulic takeoffs, of course, that's cool. Uh, this is the 1000 model, limited edition. So otherwise, the rest of them are going to be red. I'm guessing. I'm going to try to sneak in here and get a look at the control panel switches. I like the switches. Um, feels. I can't tell if that's electric or hydraulic or hydraulic. Hydraulic didn't mean to run anybody off, but um parking brake we broke this on the ditch witch so i don't know about that your foot engaged wheel there 
Uh, I don't love that, whatever that's about right there. Just, I just always feel like it's a pinch point. That's gonna get shattered and destroyed, I can promise you that. That won't last a season. Um, and this, this needs a surround. You gotta be able to rest your hand on the whole thing. Um, these twin, like our ditch, which I think that would probably be, be um, I don't know. I feel like that, uh, it's too sloppy. I don't know if you could actually, uh, you can correct. That's okay, I like that, it's not so bad. Um, Otherwise, uh, yeah, Toro, that'll get snagged on stuff down there. I don't love that. Uh, grease fittings again, got to get out of that world. Cup holder maybe would hold something, probably not. But that, that thing is so history. Dude, I could I could kung fu that thing off there. Um, what's that? Is it important, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. is it important? Well, I don't know. Okay, there you go, Toro Dingo. Okay, we're here in Vermeer. Oh, that's a stump grinder. Wait, what? Oh, stump grinder attachment on the Vermeer. By the way, sponsors of Together in the Trades for a couple years now, as well as Toro. Big thanks to them. Vermeer. Super high quality. You know you're not going to go wrong on that with Vermeer, right? Stump grinders for eternity, chippers, all that stuff. Mini skids. Okay, long tracks. I like that. I think that's wide track. Great for... Uh, uh, flotation and all that solid bars i do prefer and this this is enough i do prefer the offset bars uh you get a little more side hill grip that way i feel not a freaking thing worth uh talking about. okay vertical lift i do really like that it seems like a little thing but radial lift you lose reach right so vertical lift you keep that same amount of reach so that's cool uh you know i don't like grease fittings i don't like dealing with that so right there but they've got got a lot of flow on these things i want to say it's high end low pressure um angled blade here for that that's cool standard coupling super simple there uh lift points ever man that's a serious chunk of iron um let's see here styling all that stuff clean simple uh, i don't love these edges it's not one of my favorite things but um we've got uh and the step up on the platform that's a little high uh but i like that right there that's cool um super super simple control that could stand to be a little shorter i feel like even with my giant hands um but otherwise like very open and control so uh i think you can get a lot done like a little bit of range does a lot so i like that that joystick um i'm, I'm just not used to that so that's just super opinion based but um but again those, that's electric over hydraulic so you got a lot of control there uh you know very easily so i do like that that's cool um let's see here so you got your key there that's kind of interesting um i guess that just lives open like that once the key's in there that's kind of weird um i'd like to see a little more protection around that just to keep it from getting smashed um i don't like filling two tanks but a lot of fuel capacity is important i wonder if you got to switch tanks or not that i don't know i can't imagine that being an issue or a thing on a diesel um but again, super solid machine. That's a CTX 100, so a thousand pound capacity style unit there. Uh, standard, you know, kind of clearance down there. I mean, even that's a grease zerk there. Eh, I don't like that. But uh, you know, little things there. But overall, styling and color, styling and color looks good. I do like that for jumping the machine. That's wonderful. I really do like that. So you got a dead machine. You're, you don't got to dig down into this thing to find a battery so yeah. that's uh that's definitely a big plus i like that a ton so uh other than that a uh kohler diesel in this thing that's um uh, that color is cool i like that color that does not matter at all but it's a cool cool beige um kohler diesel i wonder what that sounds like huh how about that Here we are, Gravely. This uh, little unit here, simple little guy. Um, I like those controls. That's cool. Kind of reach around there. Uh, Throttle is easy. Grease points again. Don't love that. Um, fuel tank. This needs a lock so that you don't actually put diesel in there. That price, how can you argue with that? Um, you know, we need tracks, but whatever. Simple little machine. I love that takeoff for um, jumping it. That's awesome. Cool. All right, we're Skag Jackal. So we, we videoed this last year. That engine's way far back in there. What's that about? Um, dual pumps. That's probably uh, makes that thing run really cool. I like that black 
uh, Matt there. Not a lot has changed on it. It doesn't appear controls are still pretty, uh, pretty basic and central there though. Um, auxiliaries for your hydraulics. That's that Skag stuff there. Step up is pretty high still. Um, but uh, yeah, that's the Skag. Grapple. Here we are in New Holland, the 314. They had this model last year, uh, so maybe you go watch that video. It's just like the case, again, case New Holland, that kind of stuff, right? Uh, I like that instrument panel. I really do like that. I prefer the case, it just looks cooler. But uh, again, it's blacked out, so it's hard not to look awesome when the machine's blacked out. But uh, other than that, pretty simple machine. Case looks cooler. I really like that. Okay, there you go. Uh, here's a brand I'm not familiar with. Force. Force. Uh, tired units, don't care, don't want them. Oh, they don't have any on track. <laughs> okay, well, shoot. Now this, this is maybe looks like more they're aimed at like sports fields or something like that. So uh, let me try to find one to get in on here. Look at that arm, that's kind of wild. Um, man, that's, that's really interesting. Uh, let's go, we'll go with this unit here. And here's Force Brand. This thing is interesting. This is a prototype. You guys want me to make sure everybody knows that. Um, highest hinge pin height, uh, like seven foot on a 750, 750 pound rated machine. Um, that's just cool looking. I don't know what it is, but it's the pin there. Three zerks, you know, I don't like that, whatever. These controls are wild. Look at these controls. I love how comfortable those are. Only problem is you can't, like you've got nothing really to rest your hand on. Britt, can you even reach this up here to like kind of give you some sort of... Yeah, so that's the only thing. Like, you got to be able to plant your arm on something solid, so you're not shaking around and jerking the machine. I don't like stuff. That these buttons are right here. You don't like that? I don't know what they're for, but like, I feel like I would accidentally hit them. Mm, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. I see. Just because the yeah, way you're like, gripping. It feels like they should be up here. Fair enough. Not. Okay. I like a cup holder right in the middle. That's kind of cool. I think I like that, anyways. Uh, basic switches. I like that instead of the ditch switch switches. You know, I don't like those. Um, this it's got it, they're working on this rear attachment thing to pull like a finish rake and stuff like that behind you for sports field dressing or whatever um so uh pretty pretty interesting concept those those are pretty durable but i just don't i don't like how they stick out exactly um but the uh that counterweight's there the thing is kind of interesting they got this i think that's counterweight there too so the, the counterweight's like integrated in the back that's kind of cool so uh yeah cool stuff that's an interesting one Brittany says I can't have that bush hog. Dag gone. Okay, here we are. These are tiger claws with a Kubota engine in there. That's always a good start. Um, lots of hydraulics everywhere. That's cool. That's good. Narrow track though. Hello. Hello. Um, uh, whoa, man, that rear platform is insanely high. Like that's that's insanity. But uh, other than that, okay, controls, nice and comfy, I like it. Pilot control, that's cool. Um, I'm too tall, I can't exactly see those, those gauges very well. Simple switches, I like that. Got a horn, that's cool, I like that. Lighting, uh, we got auxiliaries here. The emergency stop, that's not the worst idea right there. That's not the worst, I, I, don't th I think they're the only people with that that I've seen. That's not the worst idea. Um, these are a little um, protruding, I guess, there, but um, see, that's the only thing. That's gotta be locked because somebody's gonna put diesel in that eventually. Only only bad thing about that. Rear platform is incredibly high though, wowzers. Um, but yeah, other than that, probably a good price point of a machine. That's an interesting protection. Oh, I thought that was to, uh, oh, that's an air intake or outlet, one or the other, air intake. Uh, okay, interesting, interesting unit there. Hmm. Because the sales guy came up and mentioned it, the price on this unit is twenty-two grand. It has a Kubota engine. Uh, I like that this this filter here is super accessible. That's probably the best design one I've seen. I will give it that because that comes off filter out, filter in. That's pretty slick. So, man, 22 grand. That's absurd. 22,000 bucks for that thing, Brent. Crazy. Good. Have a good quip. Job? Yeah, quip day one in the books. There you uh, go. It's going to be awkward as I poach box. your outro for my outro. <laughs> a dual outro. <laughs> um, I was asleep. Yeah. It is a, an exhausting couple of days, but got to meet so many great folks. Um, got to hang out the Mark Bradley all event. Yeah. Right? Melman. Melman was great.
That was really good audio, Jeremiah. That was going to be good. If you did hear that, Jeremiah says he owes me $1,000. <laughs> <laughs> With late fees, compound of interest. A huge UPS. Uh, USPS? U U uh, UPS. Uh, airplane. But anyway, all right. Well, hope you guys enjoyed the show. Hope you guys enjoyed the footage. Anything I can grab for you, I'm doing my best to just whip through grab as much content as possible. And for us, that might be the end of day really one there. Appreciate you guys. The unintentional uh, outro. And, uh, let me know Here we go. Real time. Let me know what else you want to see, and I'll try to grab it literally at the Hey, uh, worky, worky quad here, and uh, again, tires, so it's out for me, but uh, simple unit, it's not a fuel tank, I don't know what that is, uh, very, very simple machine here, um, oh boy, um, yeah, just simple little machine, I imagine, or, that control's kind of comfortable, I don't know, that's interesting, um, simple machine, that plastic throttle will get snapped, I'm pretty sure, don't like that. Uh, but again, a very simple machine. So I'm guessing this is a very price conscious uh, little unit there, but there you go. Uh, this buggy here is intense, man. Big ride on, um, big ride on tub there. Swihart's got one of those, a Yanmar. It's pretty sweet. Uh, way to get bulk material in the backyard very effectively. This mobile batch plant here for a small amount of concrete. That's a heck of a heck of a little rig there self-loading so you can do your own mason mix and whatever so pretty wild these cormides are such oh yeah okay well here's one right here cormidi uh this thing is a monster counterweights are you know usually counterweights are in the back end of things so that's really wild these cormides i think are italian made i may be mistaken i do like that tie down point concept unfortunately um yeah it might be big enough to run a chain through there so you might need to upfit those uh, the Italians love these crazy controls. They got, we ran in another Italian machine very similar, and there are just controls everywhere. Um, I don't know how intuitive. I like that there, that's nice. Um, these are too high. These, these controls need to be down lower, so you've still got, now you're, you're kind of separated from this. You can't, you can't base yourself. These need to be lower, just period. Um, interesting, a lot, of, a lot of stuff going on here. Great, I'm sure it's a great built machine. The Italian stuff is super high quality, um, but uh, yeah, interesting machine nonetheless. Okay, we got a Bama light here. I've seen these at our local rental yard, rental yard and uh, that's an interesting spot for that. That will get crushed at some point, I, I feel like. Um, operator platform here. There's just a, there's a lot going on with this machine. There's just a lot going on here. Um, so I like the controls though, they're low. I can easily grab those, that's really cool. Um, this is a little far away from there, so it's even with my giant hands. Throttle right there, eh, I don't know, that's not the, that's tolerable. I would not want to add fluid here, you'd always have to have a funnel, so that kind of sucks. I like the gauge, I like the control panel, that's pretty, pretty black and white, simple. Um, this is, yeah, H for hydraulic fluid. That's got to be, like, so idiot-proof that guys won't put diesel fuel in there, right? That sticker doesn't mean a thing. Um, just a lot going on. I don't really, really get it. The safety switch thing, I don't mind that concept. I don't love it, but I understand why a company would do that. I can't believe they manufacture them otherwise. Uh, I've got a mulcher head on there. That's pretty sweet. Of course, your hydraulics. Um... All that, yeah, bomba light, there you go. That's an interesting one. Okay, what do we got here? We got this little thing. It is a, a battery powered unit here and all your uh, standard track stuff, uh, pretty good hinge pin height, over six foot. That's how tall I am. So I like that in a little machine here. Um, let's see here, apparently potentially remote controlled. Oh, it, that thing can sit in there and be like a ride-on or walk-behind unit. I think this is the first dedicated electric one or battery one. Still got all the hydraulic, you know, situation there. Grease points, you know, I don't like that. But super high hinge pin height. That, that part is cool. The coupler, they're saying you can custom order whatever you want with that. Uh, the remote is standard, I guess. But... Um, they're saying 50,000 for a uh, MSRP on this. Now, uh, six to eight hour runtime, six hour charge time, and then of course that runtime is gonna vary by how hard or how much you run it. So interesting concept, a lot of big ones for, uh, for that battery powered unit, but if you're working indoors all the time, maybe that would be handy.
awesome. Okay. What do you think? I don't know. Um, <laughs> I think that would be handy as heck to have in the building at Hardscape Academy so we're going to run a machine indoors. The, uh, these, these friends taking a photo here. I love that stuff. That's what's so awesome about the show. It's just all the networking, man. Look at that, that structure. That thing's pretty nice. Uh, I love these things. I love selling that stuff. Uh, yeah, so we're in the hardscape area. Uh oh, we're getting into tile territory. And these are all the best dressed folks in the whole building. All the tile people. They win the best dressed yeah, award. They, they win the best dressed award, no doubt. Look at their show van. That thing's sweet. Um, yeah, splitters and all that. Okay. Hey, folks, real quick. We're at Bucket Bunker here. But um, there's a KRT here. Uh, the platform is absurdly tall. Look how tall it is. That's too high. Um, other than that, uh, a lot of controls here stuff. I think we had this on the channel last year. But uh, sim simple controls and um, joystick here, but this this grip allows you to get good grip on that and you can say grounded in the machine, I like that. Um, yeah, simple machine. That's gotta have a lock on it though, because you're gonna put diesel in there. It's, uh, that's, it's not awesome there. Bucket Bunker's a neat concept, I like it. So thanks Bucket Bunker for letting us use uh, your booth for this machine. And just for you plow junkies out there, there's these back drag plows and pull plows and all this crazy stuff going on here. Uh, all sorts of ways to finagle that blade there. That's pretty cool. Uh, those things are cool, I think. I don't know. I don't like that big post everywhere in a way. Cowboy cauldron, they call it. All right. Um, here's be fun in the right application here's garbo uh these things are pretty handy or oh ob ob arg ob arg um they got the high flow thing now on a mini skid thing i missed this the other day and this is just kind of a quick mention just kind of know this is a thing and it's notable skag is making their own wheel uh articulated loaders so i thought that was just uh like i said we could have done a whole video on these things but i don't know a lot about them so uh but i just thought this is something worth uh posting uh, interesting here, so. Kubota, we did run into this last year. Sleek looking machine, design is pretty good. I like the design, colors of course, cool looking. 1,000 pound lift capacity, I'm guessing. Grease are, of course, you know I don't like it. I don't love these hoses sticking up and out. Um, operator platforms, okay. Step is a little high, don't love that. Uh, that control is too tall right out the gate. If it were a little lower, I would like that. Cup holders are nice. I don't know if those are deep enough to actually hold on to anything or not. But uh, of course, a handle there to plant your hand and do your fine tune uh, stuff. Throttles, kind of just a big open place. You can kind of punch it up and down as you go. These controls here, the uh, T-handle style controls. Simple switches, I like that. Beats my ditch switch out on that. Uh, real simple control, though. I like that. And basic control pad, same control pad or uh, uh, information center, let's call it, as ditch switch. So whatever, I don't love that, by the way. Um, other than that, pretty safe uh, operator pad there. I don't know where fuel goes. I don't know where fuel goes. I don't know where you fuel up at. I don't know where you fuel up at. Kubota engine there, what do you know? That's hydro oil. Is that diesel there? I don't love that. You gotta pop the lid every time you wanna fuel it. Only good thing about that is you might force you to look in here and actually see what's going on. Easy access to the battery, I do like that. Easy access to the air filter, I do like that. It makes that maintenance easier. Don't like grease, don't like having to grease things. That's less than optimal. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know that I love that uh, fuel location. Not, not a big deal at the end of the day, whatever. Also that, that shell, that lid is fiberglass. That thing is destroyed. That's a that's a no go. Um, yeah, that will be crushed and destroyed in no time. So that's if it's metal, at least it's just going to get dent and ding. But when you smash fiberglass, it's over. So uh, that is a that's a huge thumbs down on that. So that that's not that's not going to work. Uh, other than that, good looking machine, really. Uh, I like that this stuff is protected, but also gives a lot of room for things to build up down in there too. So there's no perfect way to do that, I don't think. But uh, yeah. Good looking machine though.